Ciao. Welcome, golf fans, pursuers of knowledge of the almighty dollar. This is your golf guru bringing you the 2022 Valspar Championship. This is my Before the Lock show where I cover everything from ownership projections, my prize picks. We're going to talk weather. And, of course, the most valuable thing is you are going to get my top five value plays of 7K and below. And first and foremost, thanks for checking me out. And give me about oh, 30, 35 minutes. We'll get through this information for you and get you everything you need before you lock in those final DFS lineups or maybe you want to make some final bets. Okay, with that said, let's first talk about a little thing called prize picks. If you've not checked this out, I still highly recommend it. And I've still got the ability to get you guys a free $100. Of course, you got to put 100 in, but they're going to match you 100%. You can also put in 10 bucks, 25 bucks, whatever you want. And all you need to do is put in my promo code GOLFGURU. And if you are not sure what is this prize picks thing, if you've not checked it out, it is simply projections on different sports, how many home runs they're going to hit, how many birdies, how many baskets, so on and so forth by the player. And, of course, this being the PGA covering show, um, we are going to focus on that. And with that said... I'm due for a hit, and I'm feeling pretty good about this one. So I went back to the birdie run, and uh, I've done over and under. And right now, they've got Webb Simpson at three and a half birdies. I don't feel too good about Webb Simpson's game, as I've talked about many times. He's also a late afternoon tee time, even though really there shouldn't be any weather issues. But, you know, typically in the afternoon, the greens get a little crustier, maybe a little faster. They're also, you know, of course, you got the spike marks and all that kind of thing. And, well, Webb Simpson just has not been playing well. Also, the putter's not there. The driver's not been there. So, with that said, I've got him under three and a half birdies. So, if he makes three birdies, we're good. If he makes four, I'm in trouble. Uh, but other than that, I got Abraham, Abraham Answer making four birdies or, or three and a half birdies or better. Hence, he needs four birdies. Um, I did some uh, modeling of first-round birdie leaders after the, the last four tournaments. He was number one. Bruce Kepka and Bubba Watson were all up in the top 10. And so that's why they're all at over. So I just need these guys to get four birdies and we're good to go. And I also locked this in with a four pick. So this means I got to get all four right. But prize picks is up the payment. Uh, when you do one under and, you know, mix in some overs or however you do it, uh, you get 11x instead of 10x your money now. So. We'll see how that all works out. I feel pretty good about it. Uh, the other three guys are morning tee times. And, uh, you know, there's four four par fives on this course. So if they can just birdie the par fives, uh, we're good to go. So anyways, all right, moving along. Uh, just to cover some topics that I already discussed in the preview show. And, of course, you've been touched on my picks. There is a skill set ranking that we're looking for here at uh, Copperhead Innisbrook where they played the Valspar. And the number one thing that showed up time and time again, you can look at the three past champions. They're all very elite ball strikers, hence being Paul Casey and Sam Burns. Yes, Paul Casey won back-to-back, and -back uh, that would have been 2019, 2018. Of course, they did not play this tournament in 2020. Uh, also, still like off the tee, you got to hit the... We need a little bit of distance. This course actually plays pretty long for a par 71. I mean, if you look at hole by hole, uh, it will actually resonate and show you that the par fives are long, the par fours are long, the par threes are long, and you're missing a par four, hence, you know, at over 7,300 yards, it's a pretty, you know, long track. So you got to have some distance at the fairways here. Course approach is always a key. Stroking, gotta, it's always going to be top three. Sometimes it's number one, number two, but it's never going to fall out of a, out of the top three. But I have it a little bit lower because I really want to focus on the ball striking, which includes approach and off the tee. Around the green is going to show up a little bit, kind of smaller greens you know they're around 5500 uh, square feet so you know it's going to be a lot of long shots you're going to need to be able to you know have a good short game putting's you know a little less of a factor here the reason why is these are simple pretty flat uh greens you know we've been seeing quite a bit of undulation and humps and breaks and so hence why it shows up that guys like a keegan bradley uh even paul casey have putted well here because they're Pretty simple greens. You know, you get it within 15 feet and you should be able to get the line and, you know, stroke it. Uh, scrambling shows up. You got the trees. You got a little bit narrower fairways. 
So you're going to have to be able to scramble your ball around. And then the two top procs depends. Uh, of course, back to that ball striking thing, you got that 175 to 200 coming in at almost you know, 24%, almost 25%. And then procs to the pin, 200 out. So again, we need guys that are very elite with the long irons and the hybrids. And uh, you also got these long par fives, three of them coming in at 550 to 600. And then you've got also three long, well, you got four long par threes, but three of them come in at 200 to 225. And then I think there's one around 190-ish. And then again, you got to make some birdies. Again, I estimate that the winning score somewhere around 15 to 18 under is where I think it'll finish up. The weather looks pretty good. I think there's only one day of win. Of course, we'll talk about that. And then uh, as always, I leverage comp courses. Uh, I like to show you guys this to know which courses I'm looking at. And really, this isn't the ultimate end-all end be-all. But it kind of does give me some focus of guys that do well on these kind of tracks. It also will tip the scales if I'm kind of hung up between a couple different players. And just to real quickly go over the courses that I'm using, you got RBC Heritage where they play the, uh, or Harbor Town where they play RBC Heritage. You got TPC Southwind where they play the WGC FedEx St. Jude. Of course, Bay Hill we just saw where they play the Arnold Palmer. Just uh, also saw the Honda Classic where they play at PGA National. All these are Bermuda. They're all tougher tracks. They're all tighter on some of them. Some have water, um, but a lot of the similarities. They also have the same putting complex uh, greens, which is Tiff Eagle. The players we just saw and a lot of similarities there. Par 71, you got to keep it in play and also Tiff Eagle greens. And then these two here, um, the waste management from a, what I've told you from a par yardage, and also Tiff Eagle Greens is very close, but I think the playability is a little different um, because it does have the tree line and it does have a little water, but not as much. And then Sanderson Farms is a lot of crossover I've seen. And again, this is a longer track. It is Bermuda, but it's around 7,400 yards, but it is tree lined and you have to be very accurate. You have to be a very good ball striker, especially on your approach shots coming in. You're going to have those long 175 to 200, 200 pluses. So, with that said, that's the comparable courses I'll be leveraging. And you can see I, I ran 24 rounds against my custom stat model on these courses. And you can see the guys that come on number one. And it's a good show. I mean, Keegan Bradley, of course, has done well. Almost had a chance to win Sanderson Farms. Of course, almost won the Valspar last year. Coke Racks had good uh, on these courses. Kepka, Webb Simpson, historically, would do well on these courses. But again, his game is not where uh, we want it. Of course, Havla Morikawa, you got Paul Casey, who's won twice, as I mentioned, at the Valspar. Um, so some of these names are popping. Louis Oosthuizen, stroke gain is the best uh, over the past five years at Valspar. So, okay, so that gives you some guys that you might be interested in putting in a DFS lineup or maybe even a bet. All right, well, that said, let's go jump over to Fantasy National. Let's go do some analysis on the guys that are 7K and below, and I'm going to give you my top five. Okay, I've jumped over to FantasyNational.com. Of course, this is where I do all my analysis, and I highly recommend that you guys check it out if you're also trying to do your own analysis. And with that said, um, I'm going to give you a little overview of what we're looking at here. I'm looking at the past 24 rounds, and a little heads up, I already went through and used those comp courses to kind of sift through these guys. And then what I wanted to do is pull up the last 24 rounds on all courses they played. So that's pretty good because we have a nice sample size of guys that have played, you know, at least four to five tournaments uh, in the new year. From a modeling perspective, uh, the things that I've kind of changed this, I went to good drives uh, for these, you know, that's guys that are hitting the fairway or first cut and then hit the green on their approach. How do you know, that's going to be a very key thing at this course. Of course, ball strike is weighted heavily approach. There's that proximity 175 to 200. That's coming up almost 25% of the time. And then uh, I also changed this a little bit where I wanted to see guys that could score on these par fours that are, you know, 550 to 600. And then uh, instead of birdies over here, what I want to look at is because there's so many long par threes, and I think it's a big part of the course defense here, guys that can manage that or even maybe uh, pull a birdie or two out on these is I think it's going to be crucial. So I'm going to, like I said, change it up a little bit compared to what I did on my picks yesterday, but this is what I wanted to do for the guys below 7K. With that said, I got about, I don't know, 12 or 13 guys that I think you could play down here. I've got five that I've identified that I'll be using in my lineups and I recommend. Starting off the bat, you know, Kevin Percy, um, he pulls up from us. You can see on my model rank, comes up number eight. So right now he's, you know, loved by the model. Um, he's kind of funny. Usually he will show up and make, make you know, make the cut. But uh, you can see he's had some struggles this year. Uh, recently had a good showing at Puerto Rico. 
and then uh, Fortinet, but he missed three cuts, Pebble Beach, Sony Open, and Bermuda. And then does not have a good course history here. So I don't highly recommend him. Um, he is the lowest guy I have here. But if, uh, if for some odd reason you're trying to get a little different, um, the model likes him. Me personally, I'm not recommending him. But I just wanted to show him there that you knew that how high he came up in a model ranking. All right, let's talk about more of the guys that I am looking at to uh, definitely play in my lineups. Number one guy is Vaughn Taylor. Uh, he's coming in at uh, my best guy that I have from all a lot of perspectives. Um, and you can see ownership's a little high on him, which is kind of interesting. But you can see what he's doing uh, on those long par threes. He's got a real smooth, repeatable swing. He's been around a while. Uh, he actually, if you look at, I think maybe this is what's got a lot of people interested is his past two outings here. He had a T6 and a T18. I actually hit him for a top 10. I think it was at the John Deere. Um, let me verify that. I'm curious just on my own. But when I picked uh, Smell the Glove, Mr. Glover, um, let's see what he did to John Deere. Yeah, well, maybe, I don't think it was that long ago. So maybe it was here. I'm trying to remember exactly where I hit him um, for a nice little top 10. So maybe it was here. Neither here or there. Um, Von Taylor is a very interesting play. You know, you can see from a modeling perspective, he does everything that we're looking for. You can see he's made the last four out of five cuts. That's another reason why a lot of guys are probably on him. And then I'll just go click on him and you can get a little more information. So he does not drive the ball very far, but he's very accurate. And I said, he's got a very smooth kind of swing. He does gain on Bermuda can handle the wind. Okay. Let's go see where he's done his best work. So he won the AT&T Pro-Am at uh, Pebble Beach. He had a good showing at Mayakoba. That would be the Houston, the old Houston Open, but that's way long. So one of his most recent, I guess, would be Mayakoba, the Travelers. And then there's that Valspar, which is one of his better than there's the John Deere. So I think it was the John Deere, but it just, just didn't seem that long ago. Um but, you know, like I said, who knows? I'd have to go find out. But it always sticks out my mind that the uh, top 10 there where he was, you know, same kind of same price tag. Uh, there's the Waste Management. That's a while ago. There's Sanderson Farms. Again, a little bit dated. I mean, he, this guy's been around for a long time. So we're going to get a lot of, I don't know, kind of interesting. Let's just go back to the date and let's just go look at it. So, again, I told you he had a nice four, uh, four last um, tournaments. And uh, there's the John Deere recently. There's 18th at Memorial, tough track. The Palmetto at Congaree. There's that Valspar. Um, so, yeah, anyways, Vaughn Taylor is coming up for me. I like him. I'm going to be playing him. Uh, the next guy that I'm following, I'm going with some uh, kind of rookies, uh, rookies with talent that I like. Now, Alex Smalley is 7,100, so he's 100 bucks over. But I wasn't going to, you know, not include him in this because I think he's a good play. I like him in Showdown. I've been using him quite a bit. He's been producing for me. You can see he's late, made the last four out of five cuts. Best showing would be a T38 to Arnold Palmer, which, as we know, that was a crazy t tough setup. A lot of guys struggled there. Uh, he's never played this before, but he's doing everything from a modeling perspective in the par threes. The par fives, he's not taking as advantage. I mean, he's ranked 95th out of 144 guys. But again, I mean, a guy will score for you. He, you know, he can get on some streaks. He hits the ball out there, 305, 63% accuracy. Putter's not the greatest. You know, showing here what information we do have uh, that he can handle the wind a few times, I guess he has played. And I'll click on this real quick. And we're going to get, of course, some of his finishes from the Corn Ferry because he is one of the new Corn Ferry grads. So Bermuda's his best showing. Uh, you can look at Corrales. That's a little while ago. The Houston Open. That's kind of interesting. Tough track. Good showing there. Sanderson Farms, what kind of got me interesting also. Again, I, I like that from a comparable course. And just seeing if there's anything else. That's about it. But I like Alex Molly. Uh, I think I've used him below, 7K below in my lineups. Again, I think the field, you know, we've lost some guys. Um, Munoz, who was one of my picks, my top 15, he withdrew. Oh, uh, geez, I'm forgetting. Now, I know that. Um, of course, Paul Casey, but there was somebody else that withdrew. Doesn't matter. It wasn't a huge name. Next guy that I like is Austin Smotherman. Um, if you don't know this guy, it's actually who was on my cover. He actually played with Bryson DeChambeau at Southern Methodist Christian. Um, the guy, of course, graduated from the Corn Ferry last year. He looks a little bit, reminds me of his game and a little bit what he looks like. And he's almost got like a reverse C, kind of old school. 
um, but looks a lot like Will Zalatoris. Um, and he's, I got to watch him quite a bit at the Honda, and I was really impressed with the guy's ball striking, which you can see he's ranked, you know, 16th out of this field. And um, Tita Green, the guy is solid, and I see good things. I'm actually pretty psyched about this guy, and we'll see how it all works out. But just from a ball striking prowess, so just like a Will Z that, you know, not the best putter, maybe, you know, round the greens, eh. But when you see a guy that's, you know, elite at ball striking, especially on a course like we need for this, if he keeps working just like Hovland on um, the putting and, the course, around the green, you never know. And I mentioned uh, – actually, I, po- I apologize. A lot where I saw him was at the Farmers. I also got to watch him at the Honda. But the Farmers is where he really kind of, you know, got caught my eye. But uh, he's made the last three out of five cuts. you got to remember, you know, the Honda, you know, that's a tough one. A lot of guys could miss the cut there. I think, you know, Pebble Beach had a, T30, a T33 and then the Farmers – He's never played here before, of course, and then I'll, I'll click on him, and you can just kind of get a little more information on him. You know, again, pokes it out there, 305. Um, driving accuracy is up there, you know, over 65%. You can see he has had some success on POA. It's probably coming from the farmers. And uh, right here, we'll kind of show you, you know, again, we don't have a ton of data on him. But if you look, you know, it's off the tee and approach. It's, it's this, and it's not ridiculously bad. At least his last five rounds, he's, you know, just he's almost neutral with the putter. And then let me just click on this Simmons Bakes, where he had his win on the Corn Ferry. That it was a par seventy-two Bermuda. I checked that out. Farmers is best showing on the PGA. I'm just going to scroll down where I see the stats: Pebble Beach, the RSM. You know, so a lot of these he's made the cuts. Fortinet. You know, back here he had a little, uh, like I said, a little eh. But again, I'm going with what I saw, and I like to kind of with what you've got down here. I'm willing to take. We're going to take a little more upside risk uh, than just kind of the, you know, the blah. I've got, I mean, I look at, you know, Vaughn Taylor is a very kind of safe pick to get you through. I think Wesley Bryant, you know, he does, he's a good run on those things. He's a really good ball striker. It's around the green and putting, but you can see he's made the cut here the last two times. Um, the model likes him. His game kind of fits here. And uh, I'll click on him real quick. Just to see where he's had his best finishes. Accuracy is a little less, but uh, you get the ball out there. Putter is not too bad. Um, you can see last two, he's lost the putter. The other two, he did gain um, in his best. He did has a win at RBC, which is a good comparable course. I think that was another reason why I was kind of interested in him. Um, that was a while ago, but, you know, the Honda. You, know, he had a, you can see he had a really nice 2017, uh, the Genesis, the Valspar. I think this is where a lot of people thought away he goes. And then, it, you know, his last really decent finish would have been RBC, the Travelers. Um, but, yeah, I think he also had an injury. I don't know if it was a wrist injury, but I know he had an injury for a bit. And that maybe is what happened after 2017. But Troy Merritt, I'm uh, I'm not, you know, I think uh, one of you guys peed me and just, you know, mentioned that he shot whatever, 14 over. He had a ridiculous, crazy Sunday at Arnold Palmer. And I'm kind of let that go. I told you I'm going to bet him. I think he was 80 to 1. Um, you know, other than that, you can see, you know, he still, you know, he made the cut, but fell apart on Sunday as a lot of guys did. I think people finally just, you know, just kind of gave up on that course. It was just, as I mentioned, it was on the brink of, you know, of of being too far gone as far as I'm concerned, but neither here or there. Um, I like his game. You can see he's had some good showings here. He's had missed cuts, but he's at a T8 and a six. And what he does, uh, is kind of what I'm looking for again, when I get down here, is there some upside, but there's also the guys that I know can get it around this track, make the cut, and that's what I'm looking for. Of course, he won the Barbasol quick and loans a long time ago. That I think that's what used to be the, the Rocket Mortgage, funny enough, uh, Detroit Country Club, where he and Davis, I don't did they go to, I don't think they, I don't remember, they did go to, I think the one hole playoff, and Cam Davis, I think, won in the first hole playoff, if I remember correctly. He's also done good at uh, TPC Southwind. Again, these are some older ones, but it's good to see that you know, some of the courses that I'm looking at uh, from a comparable side, he's done pretty well at. So I like Troy Merritt. I'm going to give him another shot. You guys have to make that decision on your own. Hayden Buckley, I like him. Um, just so you know, he had a wrist injury uh, of some sort. And if you saw the last couple times he was out, I think uh, I think it was at the Arnold Palmer, I noticed it. I think he was like the first one off. Uh, he had his wrist really taped up. So he made the cut at the players, made the cut at very two tough tracks. 
Uh, again, good ball striker. It's typically around the green, the putting. You know, if that goes, you can see almost 70% accurate with, with some pop in the bat. And it's, you know, same thing. It's the putter. If the putter can just, you know, give us neutral and uh, we'll be pretty good to go. His best finish on the PGA would be Sanderson Farms. So that was another reason that was uh, this past fall. So, you know, again, that's, I think, when he probably came on my radar. So I like Hayden Buckley. I hope the wrist is a little better, and I think we'll have a little better outcome. And, of course, the putter, but uh, I would would recommend to play him at 6,500, low ownership. J.J. Spawn, I've talked about him a few times. Uh, You know, just heard some interviews with him, and what I've been seeing is his game is just solid. For, you know, down here, he's 6,900. He's starting to creep up a little bit. But you can see he's made the last three out of five cuts. Um, He hasn't made the cut here twice, but his game is in a different place. Uh, I think mentally he's in a different place, his confidence-wise. So I really like J.J. Spawn here. Let's take a look. He's been around a while, but pretty accurate off the tee again. You know, 291, nothing too long, but he's accurate. It's kind of funny. He's actually never won on the PGA Tour. I thought he has. So some of the shorter tracks he's done better at, uh, but RBC comes up. That's a while ago. Of course, the best showing he's had is Bermuda back in the fall. Pebble Beach, he showed up here recently, had a 16th, you know, the RSM. So, again, you know, he's probably maybe a little better play on a shorter track. And, again, when you look at this track, he's like, oh, it's only 7,300 yards. Yes, but it's a par 71. you got to remember that, that all these holes are going to play long. But I think he can get you through. All right, I'm going to move through the rest of these guys pretty quick and just let you know I'm recommending them if it's, you know, someone you're looking for. Danny Lee, you know, funny enough of the players, I had Danny Lee, and I think he had, he was four over, and he had to come back in the morning and play, I think, uh, maybe it was 15, 16, 17, 18, and he withdrew. That made me a little upset because he didn't know what the cut was going to exactly be. I mean, at that time, they were speculating, like, even one over. The cut, as we know, went to two over. If he would have went out on those four holes and could have somehow, and again, it was really bad conditions, uh, cold, there was wind, you know, not the wind that, you know, we saw a lot of those guys that deal, but there was definitely wind out there. And I guess he just felt like he couldn't get a couple birdies and a couple pars because he could have made it the cut. So that was a little interesting that he withdrew. I get the guys that, like, you know, were eight over and had one hole to play. Like, yeah, I'm out of here. I get it. But uh, anyways, I do like Danny Lee's game. Um you can see he did, you know, made the cuts at two tough tracks and has played here before. And out of the five times, at least what this is showing, he's might have played here more than that. Uh, he made the cut three out of three out of five. He had a withdraw back in 2016. Um, so I like Danny Lee. Neesmith, point him out because typically the model loves him. He's a, he's a good ball striker. Uh, he had success here. When I say success, if you're Neesmith and you have a T21, uh, that's pretty good. And he's also made the last... Three out of five cuts. Again, the Honda, the Genesis. You know, tough tracks. So I think Neesmith's a solid play down here. Tyler Duncan, he's kind of interesting to play as like a first-round leader, uh, which he did carry the first round. I don't know. It could have been Pebble. You know what? It might have been. It was one of these tournaments that he literally missed a cut. He went out and shot like a 62-63, and then went out and shot like an 80. So that is Tyler Duncan. But I think he's kind of an interesting play. You can see he made the cut here last year. You know, he's made a couple cuts out of, you know, two out of three. You want to look at it with a glass half full. You know, pretty good from a modeling perspective. Also, what he does on these longer par threes. So I think he's interesting. Uh, Patty Perez, you know, he's been playing good golf. Usually everybody kind of quits, you know, gets off Patty Perez when he leaves the West Coast swing. But he's been trucking right along. You can see, you know, four out of five. And I talked about the West Coast. We had that T9 at Pebble Beach. T39 at the Genesis, but he made the cut at the players and, and at, uh, at the API. And then you can see, you know, he's made the cut here four out of five times at a T7. That's a while ago, but, you know, if you look at the most recent, he had a T29 last year. So my own opinion about Patty Perez is I don't know how serious he takes his game now. Like, I don't think he practices a lot. I don't, I think he's out there and if things go well, awesome. If they don't, whatever. He's been around a long time. He's He's got money. Um, that's my own narrative and my own feelings about him. So just, you know, that's my thoughts. I had to put Grio in here because Grio could be, he is just a, that guy that literally will come out of nowhere and top 10. And this is a course that fits his game when Grio does what he can do. Um, 
his game has kind of went a little sideways. Amazing enough, one of his strongest things he had going for him was his irons. And for whatever reason, they've been sideways. But usually, Tita Green, he's elite. It was he's just you know terrible chipper and terrible putter. This kind of sums up. But you could see over his last 10 events, all of a sudden, his irons have just kind of went away. Um, but if you see like this sample here, his approach is typically, you know, on and in. You got, you know, go back until, I don't know, you call it spring, early summer, back in 21. He was gaining seven strokes almost on average against the field with his irons. And this is at, you know, the PGA, um, you know, Wells Fargo at Quail, at RBC. So it's there. I just don't know what's going on. I don't know if he switched, if he's trying some swing change thing, if he's switched something in his bag from equipment, but whatever it is, he needs to switch that. I mean, this is so rare to see that he's losing with his iron. So I've just noticed that these guys, they can turn it on a switch. He's at 7,000. Um, could be very interesting. You can see projected ownership. I'm going to put him on some teams because if somehow he does what he could do, uh, also, he's interesting to play from a first round leader. You know, he could, he can have one awesome round. He could be the guy that shoots a 61 and then comes out and shoot an 81. No problem. So just want to, you know, kind of give him a notable mention. Uh, Mr. David Lipsky, you know, he's been playing good golf. Uh, you can see made last four out of five cuts on some tough tracks. He's never played here before. Um, we were kind of waiting quite a bit now I gotta remember this I think he played a bit on the European tour so yeah if I remember correctly he played quite a bit on the European tour then he went to the Corn Ferry I guess he must have just graduated I know he has some success there yep so here you go but uh yeah I mean he's just pretty good player and I've been kind of waiting for him to do something a little more than what he's done so you know it seems like he's been in pretty decent form so again at 6800 could be interesting of course my Michigan native Brian Stewart has been playing good golf. I, this interested me when he was doing on the longer par threes. From a modeling perspective, pretty good. I mean, the guy is steady. He's not going to be one of my top five this week, but because I don't think this is the best course for him, but he will keep it in the fairway. He will hit some greens, and he's been playing good golf. I mean, you know, made the last four out of five cuts. Uh, of course, one of those is Puerto Rico. He did miss the cut the players, but I have no idea what his draw was. I mean, he had a lot of guys that were way better golfers than him that missed the cut. And then the last guy that does, you know, pretty unique things, Trey Mullinex just crashes the ball if they're off the tee. Now you can see he doesn't hit a lot of fairways, but he does have the distance, pretty good with the irons. You can see he takes advantage of the par fives, pretty decent on the long par threes. He's made the last three out of five cuts, and he's played here three times and made the cut twice. So I wanted to, you know, point him out for you guys. Again, just someone you might want to think of. All right, that's enough from an analysis side. Uh, the guys below 7K, you know who I'm looking at. Okay, let's look at some ownership projections still over in Fantasy National. A little less guys uh, got teams in, at least right now. So I think we were at like 13,000 lineups created in Fantasy National for the players. We're at like 7,200, but still we'll get a pretty good understanding of who's going to be chalky, who's not. Um, I've highlighted most of the guys that I've got for my 20 total picks for this whole tournament. And funny enough, as usual, you know, the guys that I'm so on are going to be a little chalky because... A lot of people see the same thing. I mean, I'm not the only one that watches golf and does analysis. So the golf and analysis says, you know, this is what it's kind of amazing. Uh, Morikawa, of course, you know, missed the cut, the players. But if you know this, you know, watch a lot. Know Morikawa that, of course, as I mentioned, watch out when he comes off a cut. He's won tournaments. He usually comes out and does very well. He's going to be pissed that he missed the cut. Again, it was a little bit out of his hands. The weather kind of took, took care of that. But so... I always say I'm on, you know, if I'm on a guy the week before, typically they really, you know, do well the next a little late for one and done. Cause I burned them last week, but anyways, so more account right now is coming in as the chalkiest Adam Hadwin, I think is very interesting. Um, I think cause of the price tag and because of what he's done here and he's had a little good recent form cause I'm not a big Adam Hadwin guy, um, but I'm on him. I picked him. So just so you know, he's right now the second, chalkiest player and he could be the chalk bomb so i'm gonna think about that when i'm putting my lineups together um you know i'll still use them but i might not be using them as heavily victor hovland you know if i had to pick you the guy that i think will win the tournament um if, his, if he just putts a little bit victor hovland is the guy that, of course he's number third russell knox you know this is one that i will be fading um you know 
I think he's a little burned out. He won the Super Bowl for him. He got a T6 at the players. He's from the area. Yeah, Pontre Vedra. So, anyways, I- I'm not going to be playing Russell Knox. Keegan Bradley also gets me a little nervous because when everybody's on Keegan Bradley and we, you know, he's had, you know, good recent form, he's had good success here. He's had success at Sanderson Farms. Like everything tells you, you should play Keegan Bradley and also being that high. Um, I'll still use him, but I might make some pivots, is all I'm saying. At least speaking from the large GPP tournament games. Now, cash and all that, yeah. Use the guys that everything tells us you should use. All right, I'm going to move through this a little faster. You see Kokrak, Sebez, you know, didn't play at the players. There's a big narrative of all these guys are going to be burned out. Um, I get that, but like I said, that would be like 70% of the field. So you're going to have to play some of these guys. Um, so I think that's a little bit why Sebez is everybody's on him. Because I don't, from a off the tee perspective, he's not long and he's not accurate. Um, so I don't, I'm still not love. Now, you know, where I, you know where I like Sebez? is I like him in a match play event. He's a bit like a Kisner where, you know, not really elite from Tita Green, but around the green and putting, he can get very hot. Uh, so there you go. Mito Piero, one of my picks. Uh, I think, again, the price tag for that, you know, for that kind of ball striking uh, is why he's so far up there. Of course, you got JT, good form. Um, you got DJ, shot the 63, so no shocker. You know, Abraham Answer is a guy that I'll be fading. Uh, not this course should fit him well, but I, uh, I just don't think his game is where I want it. I need to see something out of Abraham answer. Now I picked him for prize picks. He can definitely go out and make four birdies in the first round. That's not what I'm saying, but over four rounds, I just haven't seen the irons where I need him. Um, so it's gonna be a little wait and see Fitzy. Everybody's high on Fitzy this week. Um, you know, I picked him again, going with the narrative of he only played what two days at the players. Um, and this should fit him. Done well at RBC Heritage. Alex Noren's been playing well. There's my Vaughn Taylor. That is crazy that Vaughn Taylor is up to 14%. Um, again, they're seeing some recent form. The model's liking him. You know, there's things that are telling, but I mean, Vaughn Taylor could easily go out and miss the cut. So I actually bet him top 10. I'll just let you know right now uh, just to see, like I said, but yeah, well, who knows? All right, you got Xander Shoffley from the top guys is one of the lowers. Um, you got Lowry and Burns a little bit lower. T Hat coming in at 11. Hey, one of you guys asked me about Patty Gazire, of course, my broke back guy. You know, funny enough, uh, I kind of put him last. They asked me to rank him out of, you know, Mito. I forgot the four guys now, but it doesn't matter. I think he could do all right here, but I he off the tee makes me seriously really nervous with Patty Kazire and his putter has been okay. Hasn't been as hot as it usually is. So I'm kind of waiting until we get back to that Texas swing. And that's what I'll be using Patty Kazire probably a little more. He just, he likes going to Texas. Um, all right, let's move through these. So you can just kind of see Aaron wise around 9%. Adam Svensson. I think he could be a decent play. I didn't pick him, but, um, for showdown. I like him. He's streaky again. Good ball striker. Great ball striker. Just horrific putter at times. Like, I can't stand to watch him miss three or four footers over and over. I think Mac Hughes is quite a bit like a Patty Kazire. So, you know, if ownership is less, you could go on McKenzie Hughes. What's the difference in price? Uh, Kazire is a little less priced. Kepka, that's kind of interesting. So many people are out on him. Uh, I bet him. Uh, I'll put some lineups with him. I mean, it's all what's going to happen on Thursday. All you can hope for is Kepka has a good opening round. All right, let's move through some of these real fast uh, so you can see. Let's go see some of the lower ownership. I want to see if there's anybody that I picked. There's my Richie Wierenski, who, you know, I've been throwing a bet on here and there because he's like, you know, 800 to 1 or whatever. So who we'll never know. I'm not betting him here at all. I don't. This is just not a good fit for him. There's my Blackbeard way down here. Again, he was one other guy I was riding on the shorter courses and just didn't happen. Bronson Borgun, I was looking at him. He could be an interesting play down here uh, to get you another guy. He He's kind of steady. He could get around this track and uh, get you 6-6. Six six. Uh, I heard some people t- tout Wyndham Clark. He's, his irons have been so bad, I, I can't go there. Um, all right, I think that's it. There's my Hayden Buckley. I think he'll be an interesting play. Got Molinax down here. 
Adam Long's been playing okay golf, right? I was on him on the island swing, and uh, but he's a pretty good ball striker. He's just, again, he's just kind of bad around the greens and the putter. You just don't know what you're going to get. But for that dollar or for, you know, for the cost, uh, he's not a terrible thought. Malinati, always a fun first round leader bet. He's got an early tee time. Um, that's about it. That's about what I, you know, he, I think I got to go look at this now. Sanderson farms. I think it was a couple years back. He had a chance to win that. And, uh, I think he fell apart. On, okay. So there it is. 2020. He, uh, had a chance. So he won there in 2015 and almost should have won it in 2020. So, uh, also I think he's got an early morning tea time. And I, th- I think I bet him as a first round leader. Malinati could be sneaky. He's a really good putter. His driver, let me go back real quick. Let's be, I didn't talk about Malinati. Let's go look here. So for how he doesn't hit it very long, but he can get wayward. And let's see what he's been doing. Yeah, so at the players, he made the cut, but was just crap off the tee. You can see, you know, last time he gained strokes, I guess it would be Genesis and the RSM. Let's see where he gained the most strokes. He doesn't hit the ball far, so he's got to hit a ton of fairways. So RBC, pretty good showing. You have to, you know, keep it in the play there. So yeah, the shorter tracks is where I would more like him. But funny enough, at Sanderson Farms, which the field is a little weaker there. But yeah, I don't know. Could be someone to think about. All right, I think I've got you enough guys to think about and you got a good understanding of what ownership's going to be looking like. All right, let's go talk weather real quick and wrap this thing up. So you're going to want to, of course, use Wind Finder. Pull up Crystal Beach is the closest point to, where are we at? Palm Harbor, right by Tampa Bay. I'm getting all these confused. Um, And really right now, weather looks great. Um, There was actually some storms moving through there yesterday and Wednesday. Uh, You can see that here, but should be fine. But it is going to be a wetter track. I don't think it'll be ball in hand, but um, we'll see. Because I know they, they got pounded um of course they would have got some of the rain that we just saw the players coming across and then of course they had some rain uh tuesday wednesday but uh, all looks good uh friday is the only day i saw that keep an eye out if you're playing showdown um and also you maybe you know you could put an am so you'd want i'm sorry you want to put a pm am if this holds true if you want to throw a team or two together because, you know, there'd be a little definitely advantage of the guys going off in the morning here uh, if the winds are going to get up to this, you know, kind of blow. But Saturday, nothing really to write home about. Sunday looks pretty good. The funny enough, saying in the morning it's going to be windy and it's going to calm down. Whenever I've tried that, it's never worked. It's always gotten windier in the afternoon. So do with that what you may. All right, let's go, go wrap this up. Okay, so to summarize my top plays from 7K and below, we're going to start out with kind of a safer pick, but Vaughn Taylor, everybody's hot on him. He was like, what, the seventh chalkiest guy? So that's interesting. I I would have never guessed that. But again, this is just stats coming out of Fantasy National. So we'll see how that all cooks out. Uh, you know, I like Troy Merritt. I think uh, maybe some people will get off him, but his game has been solid. Yes, he had a bad Sunday, but a lot of people did at the, uh, at the API. So I'm plugging him in. Uh, I like Mr. Alex Smalley. I am uh, a fan of his upside. Been playing good golf. Also like him in Showdown. And then my cover boy there, Austin Smotherman, kind of a little bit of doppelganger from uh, Will Zalatoris. But if you guys have never seen him, try to find him. Try to watch him if you've got ESPN+. Plus. Uh, he's got a great swing, and he's got a real nice ball flight from T to green. And then last but not least, J.J. Spawn, kind of uh, just been playing really nice, steady golf. So if I had a look at this, I'd say – uh, my condom plays are the guys that I feel secure with, of course, Vaughn Taylor and JJ. Uh, and even Troy Merritt, these two guys is upside, right? So could they, you know, have their breakout tournament and get you a top five, top 10? It could happen or they could easily miss the cut. So that's kind of how I view these five guys, just so you know. And then real quickly, I'm just going to redo one and done. I did it yesterday, but I want, you know, if you missed the show yesterday, uh, the guys that I'm going with for one and done. So here's a list of the guys who's gained the most strokes over the last five years here. Of course, Casey's out, but you got Louis. Don't worry about Schwartzel, but Burns is a good one. Kokrak, Hadwin, Answer, 
Uh, Bubba Watson, not a lot of people talking about Bubba. You know, he's playing really good golf. He had a good round, and then he had a bad round at the player. So um, I think Bubba could be an interesting play, even from a DFS perspective. Of course, Keegan's on here. Victor Hava's only player once, but had a third place. And then so you can see, here's the guys that I'm looking at from one and done. Uh, big kind of all over the board. I think right now I'm looking at Burnsy. Uh, Cause I just don't, I don't know. I don't know where else I'm going to use them. So, but Victor Hovland, you know, if you need, if you want to, if you want to, you know, a good top 10 should win, but a good top 10 finish. I think Burns is just, you know, it's going to be what the driver does. I don't know if he changed uh, his driver. If he did, he needs to go back to uh, whatever he was hit the Epic last year. I think he, that rogue is out. Like it drives me nuts when these guys, you know, make the changes for their, you know, whoever they're representing. And I get, it's probably in their contract. Uh, you heard uh, DJ here say, that, you know, someone asked him a question, you know, why, why was your game or why did you not have wins last year? Or he just didn't play well last year. Literally he said, I was testing drivers all year. And that just blows my mind. Cause the, literally the year before that he was hitting the, uh, I don't think it was the TP five. Well, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm totally blanking on the driver before that for the, uh, stealth but he likes the stealth now hence his game feels like it's a little better and uh but yeah it just blows my mind when these guys change equipment just purely because you know they have to play the new stuff so you guys see you know we see it on tv um but yeah i would go back to whatever i was hitting really well and had confidence with all right enough about that get off that soapbox you got coke rack you got louie and then uh you know i'd say keegan bradley be i don't say a dark horse but if you need to kind of change things up um uh, maybe you know get a guy that's not going to be as heavily picked uh, to move up your one and done. That would be, I think the guy to play. All right. That's it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I wish you guys all the success. I hope we have a great week. I I've literally have not missed picking the winner. Uh, I think since Hudson Swafford, maybe Lucas Herbert. I don't know if I, if I picked him, but since the turn of the new year, I've not missed picking a winner on my top 15. So that's the good news. Now, that doesn't get you that far, right? I mean, uh, unless it's super unique, like if Austin Smotherman goes out and wins uh, when they were talking. But uh, just, I don't know, kind of a side note, I've been at least getting the winners. And uh, even last week, I think out of my 20 picks, 15 of them made it through. Um, and the week before that, at 18 out of 20. So, you know, doing pretty well. See if I can keep it up here at the Vals Bar for you guys. Again, wish you guys all the luck, success, and uh, enjoy the tournament. And then my favorite, well, I don't say my favorite, but one of my probably top three tournaments, I really liked the, the the match play, the WGC. So I did really well at that last year. I picked Horschel uh, to, you know, I had Horschel and uh, Spieth uh, as your final two. And I had Spieth, I think, winning it. Horschel actually won it. Uh, so, yeah, I did really well at that last year. I'm excited for that. I think it's a fun watch that starts on Wednesday. So you get quite a bit of golf. And it's just a different format, kind of change things up. So, Anyways, that will start the uh, the Texas swing, I believe. So, all right, guys, have a great uh, weekend. Enjoy the tournament. And I'll talk to you guys on Monday.